a 15 year old female with vague abdominal pain. Uh, I'm provided with three grayscale image, uh, two grayscale and one Doppler image uh, uh, in the region of the epigastrium of a 15 year old patient uh, who presented with vague abdominal pain, uh, in which I can appreciate that there is a, a well defined um, uh, hypoechoic area in the region of the pancreas. Um, uh, showing internal uh, and equic, uh, small cystic areas within it, uh, measuring approximately 7.7 .7 into 8.4 centimeter in uh, dimensions. Uh, and there is a very lesional uh, increased vascularity uh, noted on the Doppler study uh, without any evidence of uh, uh, vascularity within the lesion. So uh, this lesion is not surrounded by any uh, significant uh, fluid. Um, uh, and I cannot appreciate any evidence of any calcifications within it. Um, if the patient is uh, if the patient is having a previous history of pancreatitis, and uh, I have uh, labs that show that there is raised serum amylase uh, or some uh, uh, relative previous uh, history, then uh, my top differential will include a uh, um, peripancreatic abscess formation. Uh, however, I would also like to keep uh, um, uh, some other complications of uh, pancreatitis in this study, uh, uh, like uh, uh, some complicated pseudocyst or, uh, or uh, yes. Uh, next, I would like to see contrast and six scan of the abdomen uh, to better characterize this lesion, if, if available. Excellent. So we have CT and MR board. Okay. Uh, so first two images are from the CT scan images. First one is the pain study, and the second one, lower one, is a arterial phase contrast and CT scan of the abdomen at the level of the liver, in which uh, I can appreciate that there is a large, well circumscribed hypodense lesion in the region of the head of the pancreas, uh, uh, showing uh, no internal evidence of any air recency, no fluid uh, content, no calcifications, no central scar. Uh, the parenchyma of the body and the tail of the pancreas uh, is uh, uh, enhancing and appears normal. No peripancreatic, uh, 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 no peripancreatic areas, uh, fat uh, uh, visualized in these images. On MR images, uh, that is the first one is a T2 uh, weighted image and the lower one is a, um, a T2 fat site image um, and a coronal image uh, study. I can appreciate that this lesion is very well circumscribed, having hypoten uh, low signal intensity in the region of head of pancreas and internal uh, mixed uh, signal intensity areas in the center of this lesion, which appear uh, um, uh, low on T2 weighted images. However, on T2 fat site images, these are high in signal intensity and whole of the lesion is uh, of um, uh, what, is this, what is this sequence again? Uh, this is a T2 fat site image. How do we differentiate T2 from T1 by MR? Uh, I'm uh, looking in the spinal canal, the CSF in the spinal canal. Yes. This is high, it's 2 T2. CSF. And here, this is the CSF surrounding the spinal cord. Okay, it's T1 then. Uh, okay, T1. So this lesion is uh, iso intense on T1 and uh, uh, hyper intense on T2 with internal uh, cystic uh, areas that are low on T1 and uh, high on T1 and low on T2, uh, showing some hemorrhage, signifying the signals of hemorrhage. Um, Considering that the patient is of a very young age, just a 15 years old patient, and also she is uh, having vague abdominal pain. Uh, so, uh, these imaging findings are in favor of uh, because I can see that gallbladder is normal, liver, spleen, stomach, all normal, aorta, well defined. Um, this is a lesion. And uh, is there any history of uh, this lesion is great? Great. Um, I'm not some serious cyst adenoma uh, type uh, like benign lesion. This is most likely a benign lesion, but uh, uh, I'm unable to uh, 
characterize it like uh, if it's serous adenoma so i am unable to see any central scar in it uh, because that is more prevalent at the head of the pancreas uh, the uh, pseudo uh, the uh, peripancreatic fat is very clear so i am not uh, considering uh, pseudocyst or some uh, abscess in this uh, condition because there is enhanced uh, enhancement in the not like that okay if a, a hemorrhagic pancreatic mass and a very young female that would be your scenario right a hemorrhagic yes, hemorrhagic pancreatic mass yes in a very young patient in a very young female yes so uh, so it uh, not thinking of some uh, in like in sideroma endocrine tumor i don't think so because they are smaller in size like uh, Actually, neuroendocrine tumor is a very good differential diagnosis, but not the diagnosis in this case. If he is yes. male, middle age, then I would consider neuroendocrine tumor because neuroendocrine tumor can present this size if they are non-functional and they can have hemorrhage. However, this patient is young, 15-year-old, and there was no enhancement in the post-contrast if we are comparing. Yes, no enhancement. Uh, this is... Spin. Have you ever heard of spin tumor? Solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm of the pancreas. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Yes. So this uh, going back to the case, this is the ultrasound. From the ultrasound, this is a heterogeneous. Excellent description. Uh, I liked your approach. You are trying to go for next step without anyone asking. So this is the exam setting. Uh, always an ultrasound. Don't waste your time on it. Just be very fast, few points. We all know that ultrasound is sensitive, not always specific. A few points, important negatives, and then go for next. So uh, as you just did. So this is the ultrasound. We can see that this is heterogeneous, pancreatic uh, head uh, mass with area of cystic changes in the center and no internal vascularity by color doctor. However, be very, very careful with this image uh sometime if the sonographer or the uh, who's ever taking the scan uh put the color doppler for only a few seconds and then take it out uh one pitfall uh, is that uh, hypovascular masses doesn't always show internal vascularity on color doppler and you might need to wait on it for uh, more than a few seconds maybe 20 seconds to look for subtle internal vascularity. However, from these images, we don't see any obvious internal vascularity by uh, color Doppler. So next, we would characterize it by CT and MR. We can see here this is heterogeneous, slightly hyperdense, and there is no convincing enhancement. Maybe here there is area of enhancement. And then MRI, it's very clear that this mass is heterogeneous, very heterogeneous. It's hemorrhagic. We can see hemorrhage a bright on T1, dark on T2, and then always the important negative in such cases are having central scar, having solid component. Uh, one important thing, uh, you should ask for a subtracted images. So we're not sure, is this enhancement or is it hemorrhage? So always ask for a subtraction to subtract the hemorrhage and if there is any solid enhancement underlying this hemorrhagic mass, then we would see it clearly. Uh, I didn't provide, but the subtracted images in this case did not show any internal enhancement. Next, you should comment on the rest of the pancreas. So the pancreatic body and tail are not atrophied. There is no ductal dilatation, no peripancreatic lymphadenopathy. And given the size of the mass, it is compressing the duodenum. So you need to make sure that the patient doesn't have gastric outlet obstruction caused by this mass. We can see here there is no dilatation, no proximal obstruction of the stomach. Here we can see that the duodenal is stretched. So, uh, spin, it's benign lesion. However, 15% of spin are malignant. So any case with uh, diagnosis of uh, spin should be surgically removed because they have risk of uh, malignant uh, transformation. 
the best differential diagnosis for these lesions are neuroendocrine tumor. The demographics for this lesion, SPIN, is always young female with hemorrhagic pancreatic mass. This article is a nice article showing all the differential diagnosis of cystic pancreatic lesion with uh, their radiological features, patient demographic. Uh, so I didn't like when you said serous cystadenoma because serous usually it's microcystic, lobulated, central scar, usually an elderly female, which is not seen in this case. Um, so this, this article shows all the uh, pancreatic cystic lesion with their picture and demographics. I encourage you to go and have a look at it. Excellent job. This case. So, uh, uh, hemorrhagic uh, pancreatic pseudocysts uh, is a valid differential diagnosis. Uh, that's why we need to assess the pancreatic parenchyma. So having this size of pseudocyst, complicated hemorrhagic pseudocyst, it should be a very bad pancreatitis. Uh, as we can see here, the body, uh, so we can see here, this is the pancreatic body and tail. There is no atrophy, there is no pancreatic fat stranding. Uh, there is no sequelae of uh, pancreatitis. Uh, to suggest that. Uh, and we can see it's very rounded with edge. Uh, if it's ill-defined and uh, involving larger surface of the pancreas, then I would consider hemorrhagic pancreatitis. But again, if it's hemorrhagic pancreatitis, then the patient would be very sick with significantly elevated uh, amylase lipase. This patient presented with only vague abdominal pain for a while. And these lesions are usually uh, in, uh, discovered incidentally or due to mass effect on the duodenum or adjacent organs. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you, ma'am.